peeps, welcome back to my channel and to my first episode of my series Server-Side Swift using Vapor. Uh, in this series we will cover everything you need to know about Server-Side Swift and Vapor, starting off with from scratch with something like an JSON API going over to implementing our first website, also with authentication. Let's say you want to implement registration and login on your website or you want to authenticate your iOS app with your backend using token, Jot, basic, um, so a lot of lot of stuff like databases uh, on the website on the server side and um, roles, uh, admin user roles, uploading of videos or pictures or making chats uh, using WebSockets, all kinds of stuff that I have in mind to cover as well as all your feedback that you come up with for me to cover. So it basically ends up being an infinite series about vapor and i'm really looking forward to it i'm super excited to start this journey with you and all you need to know and you need to have is first basic um, understanding and knowledge about swift no knowledge about ios no knowledge about vapor but basic understanding of swift which means for example variable disk declaration functions, classes, protocols, and optionals. That's roughly the field you will have to be familiar with to um, code along without any issues, having questions uh, that I'm not answering basically uh, because I'm like requiring you to know them. So, and what you need to have is either an Ubuntu machine, so Linux to code along or a Mac or a Mac with Xcode. And in this series, we will use Xcode and a Mac, but you can still like code along using Ubuntu because that's just my ID and OS, but we are not bound to that since server-side Swift runs on both OSs. Now let's jump right into it and have a look at the Vapor website. You have two links that are very prominent. One is join the chat and I strongly, highly recommend joining the chat because the community is the kindest I've ever come across and everyone is eager to help. So whenever, even to this, to this day, whenever I face a challenge or a problem I can't solve myself after researching um, for, a, for a solution in the internet, I will ask the community and everyone will just like be up to help out and solve the, so the problem with me. So it's a win-win situation. You ask the question that you cannot answer yourself, you get the answer and also a future person who has the same question finds the answer in the channel because of you. So join the chat and then we will click on get started, which will get redir which redirects us to the documentation. And so uh, for this series, we will go with the macOS um, install guide for Vapor, uh, but you can use Ubuntu if you are running Ubuntu. So first, as, as I said, you will need Xcode because with Xcode also you have, uh, you will have Swift installed. And then next, uh, after you have installed Xcode through the App Store, right? You will go to the App Store and then install Xcode, which is for free. You'll just search for it. I have it already installed. That's why I can't uh, download it. But after that, you will have to install Brew. You will just go to brew.sh and copy and paste that line into your terminal. Whoops. Copy that line into your terminal and it will install Brew for you. So I use iTerm. Uh, you can just use terminal that's just whoops that's just a uh, preference of uh, what application you like better but copy and paste that you have brew install which is a package manager force for mac os making it easier to uh, to install future software for example uh, vapor toolbox which we'll do in a second or database management systems like mysql or postgresql or other stuff even and then if you copy and paste these lines, uh, you can just use that one. Let's go to our I or terminal again, paste that. So brew tab, vapor tab gets executed. I have already installed vapor toolbox, so that's why well, nothing will happen. And then brew install vapor tab vapor, and it will tell me I already have installed the vapor toolbox, but for you, it will take a little moment and install it for you. And you can test everything worked out fine with typing in vapor dash dash help and you'll see you can supply some commands because Vapor Toolbox got installed successfully. Now um, we can close that and we can be in our terminal and 
go to the directory we want our project because we will create now our first project and run our first application. So let's go where we want to have our project located. I will go to the desktop and what you type in is vapor new. That's the command to create a new project based on a template uh, provided by vapor and name it whatever you want. So I will name it Zelda, for example, vapor new Zelda. Now you see uh, a new directory appearing up here and what it basically does, I will show you, uh, it will clone the template from the GitHub repository of Vapor because it's open source. We can have a look on it. So slash Vapor slash API template, that's the template that gets cloned onto your system, renamed to the name you've provided. And that's basically it. Uh, it makes it just easier. So you don't have to go here, clone it yourself, rename it. Uh, you will just use Vapor Toolbox and you're good. So after doing that, we can go in, uh, into our project and have a look at all the files that are existing here. Because there's one file I want to talk about shortly and in a later episode, episode more deeply about, uh, which is package.swift. You will have to know that in server-side land, we are regenerating and actually creating an Xcode project quite often. Um, we throw it away and create, an, <laughs> create a new Xcode uh, project uh, Again, quite often. Uh, and on the opposite, in iOS land, basically once you have an Xcode project, you don't really recreate it. Uh, you just go with it. So an Xcode project here is created by, based on the package.swift file. And the package.swift file defines your dependencies that should get into your Xcode project. And how do we generate an Xcode project to then be able to open it up in Xcode and run our application? Uh, you will just type in Vapor Xcode. So th that's where the Vapor Toolbox comes in handy once again. You hit enter and the first time you do that, you will, um, Vapor Xcode will also not only generate the Xcode project, but will before that fetch the dependencies defined in package.swift if they aren't fetched yet. Once the generation is done, it will ask you whether you want to open it type in Y and hit enter and it will open Xcode for you. You can make this step um, a little bit faster or shorter by su supplying Y uh, right away with a dash and it will open Xcode without asking. So what do we have here? Way more uh, stuff than we need for now. Uh, it could can look a little bit intimidating on a first glance, but it really isn't. What I like to do is now we won't cover a public folder, test folder right now. Uh, all we do is our whole application, all our code will always lie into the app, like inside app. That's where we put all our code into. Now, what I like to do is we have this template and it also comes with some implementations already. So if you are a starter, uh, I like for you to delete everything from that template to the bare minimum to have a better overview what is actually needed to run a server-side application. So just go ahead and delete controllers. Go ahead and delete models as well and go into configure.swift and delete everything underneath router, under the registration of router and then also everything above of it. So all you're left with is the router configuration and then you could go into roots.swift and delete everything inside of here. So you're left with nothing in here. That's the bare minimum you need. The configuration, that's the bare minimum configuration. You need a router and then you need the function here, but being empty. So let's run it. And by default, your server will run under the port 8080. So the command line will pop up and show you that the server starting at localhost colon 8080. Let's have a look on the right side. It says server starting on HTTP localhost 8080. So why don't we just have a look on, on that URL opening up a new window on Chrome and go to localhost 8080. Hey, we have a response. We have an error, error, but it's a response. So our server is responding to us under this uh, URL, which is basically the index URL. 
right? So that's the server and that's the URL, which is the index. And it responds with not found because we haven't implemented any handling under this URL. So what you need to know is that there are different kinds of requests, HTTP requests that can be made. One of them is a GET request. So, um, and I mentioned GET request amongst like, for example, PUT, DELETE and PATCH, which are the most common ones like GET, PUT, DELETE and PATCH that are the most common ones. And I'm mentioning GET here because whenever you are making, um, or whenever you're opening a website, um, you are making a GET request to the URL you're passing into here with your browser. Your browser is always making a GET request to the URL you're passing in here. So we are making a GET request to our server, but we are not handling a GET request at the URL index. So let's go and use the router and then say we want to handle a GET request that comes into our server at the URL the index URL and then we will have a closure whoops we will have a closure that handles or that actually gets executed once uh, that kind of request get, comes in so that closure that gets executed executed will get passed into it um, the request so whenever a request from a browser is made to our application or that request that get request gets handled by that um, function and that that request will get passed into the closure at the with the name variable name request for example we can name it whatever we want it's actually of type request so if we do that that should just work out fine as well and uh, all we do here um, I mean we do have access to the request uh, variable but we don't use that here we, we will return as a response to that request uh, a string so let's return a string call um, called hey listen and run that so when a get request to the index is made then it will be handled by our server and a string called hey listen is fired back so if we refresh that site that's it you have implemented your first server-side swift application handling a request and responding to it I know that's not too much but it is something to start with. Here's a small challenge before we end this episode. Why don't you define another handling of a GET request to a different URL or a different path and return a number? And that's basically it for this episode. But if you don't want to miss out on future episodes, make sure to subscribe and also let me know in the comments what you want me to cover because I want to cover everything. And um, yeah, also check out the description box once again because there's the link to the Discord channel for the Vapor community. And there's also a link to Instagram. I'm super active. You can access me on Instagram. And there's also a link to Patreon where you can download every source code of every video and support me to do that full time and multiple times a week. And um, yeah, I hope you liked it and see you in the next episode. Bye.